Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you're having nice weather and are full of the joys of spring. While we here in the Southern Hemisphere are starting to unpack our jerseys and coats. You know, sometimes the joke is not the joke itself, but what people make out of it. And a perfect example of this is the story Rebel Wilson told about being invited to a medieval party by a royal which allegedly was to turn into a drug fueled orgy. The actual party was hosted by what she called a tech billionaire at a ranch just outside Los Angeles. She says the royal who invited her was like 15th or 20th in line to the British throne. So, of course, everyone is speculating now about who the royal could be. Printing and publishing the line of succession on every platform imaginable. But although I obviously have not watched every single post or every single video, it is hilarious to see how few of these so-called experts forgot to take into consideration that in 2014, not only was the Queen still alive, but neither Louis nor Charlotte was even born yet. Good golly, if you give yourself out as an expert on a subject, then at the very least, you should know that. So, in 2014, the only adult male in the line of succession between 15th and 20th was David Armstrong Jones, Viscount Lindley, now the Earl of Snowden. But notice, she said, the man was a Windsor. So the next Windsors in the line of succession are Prince Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, who was already 69 in 2014. So I doubt, seriously doubt, that it would be him. After Prince Richard is Alexander Windsor, his son, the Earl of Ulster. So either poor Alexander is the first eligible male to qualify or Rebel Wilson is lying. She's either lying about the royal's position in the line of succession or about the entire party or that she was actually invited by a royal. But one way or the other, she is lying. The only adult male currently in the line of succession between 15th and 20th, is Peter Phillips, who is indeed now the 18th in line to the throne. But in 2014, he was number 12. So Rebel's story does not make sense. Or she's lying about something. So what is it, Rebel? Are you lying or just looking for attention or both? Anyway, let's continue. Oy vey. And when funny gets funnier, <laughs> have you seen the headlines announcing Harry and Meghan's new appointments? Both appointed in the communications division. Yes, the announcements read, the royal couple have hired new communications executives in both Britain and the United States after the former director of global communications was promoted. <laughs> yes, my friends, I read this two days ago, but could not stop laughing long enough to actually talk about it. I often wonder, just exactly who do Harry and Meghan think they are? I do not think that Meryl Streep or Katy Perry or Kim Kardashian even has that many staff. I mean, cooks, housekeepers and gardeners excluded, okay? As a matter of fact, I know they don't. I asked, and yes, of course, these stars have secretaries, sometimes two, but usually their PR company and or their agency or their agent handles their social media accounts, etc. They often have dedicated staff or a staff member to do so. 
media liaison is also mostly handled by either the agent or the PR company and communicated to the star via her secretaries or every now and then during a meeting. So obviously, Harry and Meghan think they are still royals. <laughs> oh, but Bookie, they need staff for Archwell Foundation, Archwell Productions, Archwell Audio, and of course the rest of the 101 LLCs, like, for instance, Mama Knows Best LLC and so forth. Yes, I guess. But the only two which are sort of active is indeed Archwell Productions and Archwell Foundation. And remember, they only work one hour per week for Archwell Foundation. And they have a head of the foundation um, who earns well over $200,000 per year. Anyway, let's move on a little. Harry and Meghan promoted Miranda Barbeau from Director of Global Communications to Vice President of Programs and Media Operations. Now, I searched high and low, but could not find out who the actual President of Programs and Media Operations is. Not even on their website. So, is it Megan, is she her own president of programs and media operations? <laughs> Ashley Hansen is still the head of communications, okay? But if Miranda is vice president of programs and media operations, then who is actually president? Okay, but... For now, let's talk about the new appointments. Number one, Charlie Gibson, with a P, will become the new director of communications and will be their press contact in Europe and will work with the UK team. Or so they say. <laughs> Good Lord. I did not even know they had a UK team. And then I ask, what for? In the new era of internet, cell phones, landlines, Skype, and all such things, surely their team in the United States can also handle their press in the rest of the world. I wonder whether Katy Perry, Tyler Perry, or even Oprah has a UK team. I sincerely doubt it. I think the United States team handles whatever comes their way from elsewhere. Anyway. So, dear Charlie is yet another director of communications. <laughs> the other new addition is Kyle Bullia, who, according to reports, will be handling Harry and Meghan's United States press and media as their deputy press secretary and director of communications for U.S media. Oh God. So listen up. Here is a short list for you. Ashley Hansen, Head of Communications. Now Ashley was supposed to have resigned end of last year but apparently she hasn't and she is still with Archwell. Okay so Ashley, Head of Communications. Miranda Barbo was Director of Global Communications and is now Vice President of Programs and Media Operations. Charlie Gibson, another Director of Communications, UK. Kyle Bullier, Deputy Press Secretary and Director of Communications, US Media. Well, my dears, in my very humble opinion, this is a perfect example of Meghan's gaslighting and her delusions of grandeur. Simply put, and a perfect example, do you think Charlie Gibson would have left his job running PR campaigns for Haribo, Instagram and Samsung if Megan offered him a job as media liaison officer? Highly, highly unlikely. But as 
Director of Communications, UK and Europe? Of course he will, because even if he sits and draws stickmen all day long, the title will look great on his next CV. And the same, I think, applies to Kyle Bullier, who was Corporate Communications Manager for United Talent Agency. Now, why would he leave that job if not for the title? And obviously a drop of fame, because since his appointment, his photograph has appeared in the media about a hundred times. Anyway, with all the communications staff, I wonder why Harry and Meghan's communications are still shit. <laughs> Never mind. I also read that Megan has a contingent of 50 people working on the production of her cookery and gardening show. Yes, my dears, 50. I emailed the one person I thought might know whether this is true, and when I asked, she answered, 50, if not more. It is a circus. I asked for some more information and she told me that on the production team of a television series, there are normally 80 to 100 staff. I mean, anything from wardrobe, makeup, lighting, directors, stagehands, the arts department and many, many more. And each department has about 10, 12, 15 people working for them. But on a production such as this cookery show for Megan, which is one, not in a studio, and two, likely does not require wardrobe and wardrobe assistance, or at least it shouldn't, there are usually 20 to 30 crew members. Megan's crew is thus not exactly out of the norm, but definitely for this particular type of production. But like she reminded me, she's being told it is an absolute circus. And when she hears more, if she does, she will let me know. She brought up a good point, though. We have no idea how many episodes this cookery, gardening and entertainment show of Megan's will have. But my contact says shooting a reality show like this can cost anything between $100,000 to about $500,000 per episode. And obviously, the bigger the crew, the more money it costs per episode. So Megan being almost on the cusp of the number of crew for a reality show, one can safely assume that hers will cost between $300,000 and $500,000 per episode. Okay, I said, but Sony Pictures Television, the Intellectual Property Corporation, is indeed producing. Yes, she said, but that means absolutely nothing. It could very well only mean that Sony is being paid to produce, as where would Megan get or collect a crew from? She says there are likely two options. Either Netflix is paying Sony and Megan is only being paid for acting or starring in the series, plus a hundred bucks or so for being executive producer. I'm joking, okay. Um, or Megan and Harry via Archwell Productions are actually paying Sony. Now, I wonder which is true, but my contact and I are both guessing that Netflix is doing the paying and footing the bill, which means that the cost will likely come off the hundred million they are supposed to pay Harry and Meghan. And what Meghan and Harry will get out at the end of the day will get less and less and less as the cost of the production skyrockets. Oh, well, my dears, then that is that. I think that the coming month will be an interesting one. There are rumours of an announcement from Buckingham Palace, apparently an important one, and I can think of a hundred things it could possibly be, but 
Otherwise, I don't know for sure. And, you know, I'm not one for clickbait. But I'm keeping my ears to the ground. And if I hear anything, I will definitely share it with you. So for now, I have to go and I wish you well. Take care of yourselves. Bye.